Suppose f is a vector field on all of R3 for which the curl of f is identically zero, so it's a zero vector on all of R3, then what we'd like to do now is show that this vector field must be conservative on all of R3. So by Stokes' theorem, let's see what this says, okay? So by Stokes' theorem, we then have the double integral over any surface in R3 of the curl of f, so the surface integral of the curl of f dotted with ds, this must be equal to the path integral of f dot dr around the path which is the boundary of our surface, okay? So where c is equal to the boundary curve of s, and all of this is positively oriented in the sense that if we have our boundary curve, so there's a, there's a boundary curve, that this is enclosing the surface, the region where the surface is. So the surface might be some, it doesn't have to just be the flat surface for Stokes' theorem, right? And so then this surface is connected, something like this. The idea here, you know, we've got this surface here, S, and this is the boundary of S. All right, now this is a little weird looking, but the idea, it's, it's hard to picture this, especially when I draw it. But the idea here is that this surface is curved in three-dimensional space, and the boundary curve, the boundary curve itself, is a simple closed curve, okay? And as long as all this criteria is met, then what do we learn about this? So in this case, we have then, um, because our curl is the zero vector, what we have is that this double integral over the surface, the surface integral of the curl of f dotted with ds, this is really equal to the surface integral along the surface of the zero vector dotted with ds, and of course the zero vector dotted with ds is just going to be, when integrated up, is going to be zero, right? So this integral is equal to zero. Now, that then implies by Stokes' theorem. So by Stokes' theorem, so by Stokes, this then implies that the path integral around the boundary of f dot dr is also zero. But we proved in a previous section back in 16.3 that if the path integral around the boundary of f dot dr, so the path integral around any closed curve, I should say, of f dot dr is equal to zero, then that means that this integral is independent of path. All right, so just stringing together all of these results that we've worked hard to prove in the past, we now have that this integral along any closed curve C, f dot dr, really any curve C at this point, this is said to be independent of path. And then we also proved uh, in 16.3 and 16.4 combined that if our, if our integral is independent of path, therefore, and by the way, this is, it's independent of path on all of R3 again, right? So the entire domain of its definition. And so therefore, what does this mean? This means that F is conservative. Again, this was a theorem that we proved in section 16.3 and 4 kind of combined. So F is conservative on R3. All right, and so that's all it takes. So once we have all this high powered machinery, it's pretty easy to show that if the curl of a vector field is zero, then the vector field itself must be um, it must be conservative. Now, I was a little, so, not super precise about what's going on here with the surface, and so actually to state the theorem, to prove the theorem precisely, what do we need to say? We need to say that this is true for every surface in R3, and therefore for every curve in R3, and that's how we get the independence of path, right? So, so this integral, this integral can be computed for any surface S in R3 that is bounded by a simple closed curve. All right, so as long as it's bounded by a simple closed curve, then this is true, and therefore it then reduces to this path integral, and the path integral being zero says that the vector field must be conservative. All right, so Stokes' theorem gives us a very fast way to show that if the curl of F is zero, then F must be conservative.